What's up everyone? So in the previous videos we saw how to download and deploy the FortiGate. Uh, we even performed some uh, basic administration tasks. So at the moment the FortiGate is simply discarding any traffic that reached on its interface. If you look back at the diagram, uh, the FortiGate is acting as the gateway for the network. 16574. So any traffic that tries to reach the network 192.168.126 is going to be discarded. And this happens because the 48 has an implicit denial rule that uh, discards all the traffic. So we can take a look at this by navigating to policy and objects and firewall policy and we can see that we have an implicit deny with the action set to deny so often you will hear me speak about rule or policy uh, they essentially the same thing so let's unpack what a rule or a policy is so we have a name and we have the source and the source this will be the initiator of the traffic and this can be an IP, can be a subnet or a group of addresses. We have the destination and that's the IP or subnet we're trying to reach. The schedule, this uh, tells on which days or which time we want this rule to be enabled or disabled. We have the service column and here we specify which services we want the rule to match whether it's HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, and so on. And we have the action that's either to accept or deny. We have the NAT, and that stands for Network Address Translation. And we're going to talk about NAT in a minute. And we have the security profiles, and they allow to inspect the traffic at a much deeper level. And we're going to talk about this in the future. And lastly, we can enable logs for monitoring purpose. So essentially, those are the components of a rule or a firewall policy. So let's suppose that we want to allow our local network to access a web server on the internet. Okay, so let's create a new rule for that matter. And we're going to give it a name and it's going to be a LAN to internet. The incoming interface will be our LAN interface. The outgoing interface will be uh, port 2. And you can see that it's useful to use alliance. Uh, this makes it easier to identify which interface we need to use. And the source will be our LAN subnet. So we don't have the LAN subnet yet, which means we'll have to create. So we'll create a new address. And the name is going to be something intuitive. In this case, I'm using N as the network. And this is the subnet. And this is going to be the mask. So we're going to select the type as subnet. And here will be the subnet address. 1065740 and the mask is going to be 255 255 255 and we're going to press ok to save this object and we're going to select this new object the destination we're going to set to all addresses and the schedule to always we want this enabled all the time and the service, uh, we're going to select HTTP and HTTPS. Now we're going to remove NAT for now. And we're going to save this rule. Okay, we see that we have a new rule that was added above the implicit deny rule. And this is the name we set the source address. Uh, the destination, the schedule, the services, and the action. So the way to interpret this is that when traffic is sourced from an IP on this subnet destined to any other subnet, it will always be enabled 
and we only match this policy for HTTP and HTTPS. And if either match these services, it is going to be accepted. The firewall policy inspection is performed from the top to bottom, which means that this rule will be inspected before the implicit denial rule. So we have to take this into consideration when we are creating new rules. So now let's try to access the web server as we already have the rule allowing us to do it. So I'm going to open a new tab and the IP should be 192.168.126.1. And it just updated. Okay, 126.1. Now it looks like we can't access yet the web server. Let's take a look at the diagram. So we are sitting at the network 1065.74. And we are allowing this traffic to be forwarded by the fourth gate. Now, from the routing perspective, we know that uh, if we try to reach a network that is outside of our scope, we're going to forward to the gateway and the gateway will find a way to deliver to the destination. And we can assume that at this part is working, but we have to be sure that the other side, the destination, knows how to reply the traffic we are sending. Now we can assume that the firewall is delivering the pack to the destination, but we don't know whether the destination has a route back to reply the packet. Also, from a security perspective, we don't want to expose our LAN network to the internet. We want to hide it from all the internet. So to do that, we have to use NAT, Network Address Translation. And that's the reason why we disabled NAT in the first place, to understand that this is the problem and what NAT is trying to solve. With NAT, we are able to hide the LAN subnet with the outside interface of the fourth gate or with a different pool of addresses. So in this case, we're going to use uh, SourceNet or SNet and we're going to enable NET and set it to use the outgoing interface. There are different options for NET. We can use dynamic IP pool, we can use uh, destination NET, but for this moment, we're just going to enable SNet. So we're going to press OK and we're going to try again to reach the web server. So I'm going to refresh the page and we can see that now we are able to access the web server. We might also have a scenario where we want to expose uh, an internal server with a public IP on the internet. And we can use destination ad for that case. So let's see how we would do that. So first we will have to create a virtual IP. And we're going to create a new one and we'll provide the name so let's call it a uh, web server and i'm going to change the color to red just to be easy to identify as an object on the internet and we want to select the outside interface for two that's where it should be coming from and the external IP has to be or will be on the same range as the outside interface. So we're going to select 192.168.126.5. And it's going to map to the private IP 1065.74.201. That's for example. And we're going to save this. Now, if we go back to our firewall policy and we're going to add a new rule above the LAN to Internet. So we're going to add uh, an empty policy above. Let's add it and let's name it uh, Internet 
to web server and this should be source from port 2 testing to port 1 our LAN interface and the source will be all and the destination will be the virtual IP we just created and the service let's select for HTTP only and everything else we're going to leave as default and we have to enable this policy okay so we have what is called destination at and let's take a look at it so we have traffic sources from any place on the internet that is destined to our web server public ip and at the internet this is known as 192.168.126.5 but internally will be mapped to 1065.74.201 and it's only matching the http service and it will be accepted so if we were to test this from the internet side this would be allowed on the 40 gate and another cool feature is that we can drag and drop the rules as we need. So we change the view by sequence. You see that the internet web server has a sequence number of policy ID number two, but is being placed at the top. If we want, we can drag to be above the implicit deny rule. After this video, I hope you get an understanding on how to deploy firewall policies, how to order them, and in which situations to use NAT, such as source NAT or destination NAT. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.